We were professors of applied sciences. We were passengers in our friend's car on the way to a party for another friend who wasn't a friend at all, but some other person we had met at another dinner party for someone we couldn't remember for the life of us. You touched my face, brushed back my hair, looked me in the eye. Your breath smelled like chocolate milk. It reeked of chocolate milk. I was lactose intolerant, but I am lactose intolerant. I was afraid kissing you then would upset me, Ed. If I kissed you, I wonder, would there be enough dairy on your breath, on your tongue, to make me sick? I was an intelligent, mature, sexually pervasive woman, and still I wondered if there was enough dairy residue on your tongue to make me sick. Why are you even drinking chocolate milk? Who drinks chocolate milk? You do, I guess. Always. You lean in. I could feel your lips against my ear. The tiny hair sticking to your moist lips. It tickled. I wished to move away just a moment so it didn't tickle so much. But you didn't. Punishment, maybe. Maybe not. Either way, it was nearly unbearable. Your breath was warm, hot, and it consumed me by it. Ear, my ear, my cheek, my neck, my back. I was wet. It was cold that night, but I felt warm, and you said it. Like you'd rehearsed it, like... Like you'd stood in front of a mirror for hours with index cards going over and over and over how to say those words correctly. I never heard those words from anyone other than my parents, but they had never said it so close, so quiet, so painstakingly practiced. But I never held that against you. I never held anything against you. Oftentimes not even myself. I never said those words to anyone. I assume they must be difficult to say. It's so easy to pronounce, but you strained each monosyllable. It was as if her childhood speech impediment had returned. The reason you were so ridiculed in grade school and high school. The reason you dropped out of college. There was a time when you controlled it, but there, in that moment, with those words, you could barely utter anything. Such simple words. I almost laughed. I had to stifle it. You would have been petrified. Were you afraid I would laugh? I'm sure you were. Hey. For a moment, at least. For a moment, yes. I at least. Uh, don't touch me. Please. Don't. Often. Now, years later. I hope you were afraid. I hope you are afraid. I pray to God and Allah and the guy who stands at the corner of our street preaching to the congregation of pigeons about lies in the form of a joke. Please, let him have been afraid. Please, let him have taken everything he had to whisper those words. Please, let him have been sick hours before, kneeling down in a public restroom, guzzling chocolate milk just to calm his nerves. Sick in the moment before he said anything to me, before I acknowledged what he said, before anything else happened. And now, I don't, God damn it, not now. And now, you put up back on the pants that I bought you for Christmas, and I brush my teeth, scraping away the taste of garlic, I weave get into bed and wait to wake the next morning when our children wake so we can rush them off to school before telling each other goodbye, kissing 
each other and cheat. All the while under our breasts, we hire, please, please, 